Orloft, I'm Trip Foreman, and this is the Roberts Metamorph. Got a couple things that you may have noticed have changed in our environment here. We are no longer actually in the rear bo real board loft. We are in a dark cave, inconspicuously hidden near the real board loft. And this is our place for specifically reviewing boards. Reason that we come here is real board loft is actually a little bit too busy right now, midsummer, to do board reviews amongst all the people that are out there getting new boards to get lit up in the ocean. So we have this space and when we put this space together, we did it so that we'd have a place where we could do reviews, but also so that you could see the boards a little bit better without having a bunch of boards in the background and, and uh, moving parts and pieces in the background and just be able to follow the outline, follow the rocker, look at the rails, look at the concaves and be able to see what each board is about. And I think uh, having this set up here for the reviews is uh, it just allows you the viewer to see the board a little bit better not only us talking about it and telling giving you the feedback from surfing it but also being able to see the curves a little bit better when you're watching it uh, from home we've got someone that i want to introduce you to a good friend of mine that i surf with quite a bit his name is jake Sachs. he comes from a board building background he's actually at the point where he's building about 200 boards a year himself uh, at every part of the board from shaping the blank either a full hand shape or a computer design to a hand finish glassing sanding fins everything and through the the benefits of modern technology i can just snap my fingers even underhand and jake will appear watch this you ready jake like i said it just takes one little snap so jake welcome thank you welcome thank to you. the real board loft and uh so paint a little picture for those of you that are watching this review. Uh, we were actually just lucky enough to have Robert Weiner, Surfing Magazine Shaper of the Year, here at Real to uh, tell us a, a lot about the Metamorph and the design that went into it. And while Robert was here, we did a, uh, an all staff demo. That means everybody from Real went to the beach and surfed with Robert and his team and, and all, everybody at Real got to surf the Metamorph. So Jake, tell us a little bit about uh, the metamorph and what you, what you felt when you were out there surfing on it. Yeah, for sure. This board was well loved at the demo. Um, as you can tell from the wax, super dirty. Everyone was riding it, really enjoying it. And uh, what we found was that it was just a really good everyday uh, daily driver hybrid. Um, everyone's kind of trying to uh, find a board they can ride in any condition and this one did that really well. Um, it, it's got a lot of full volume up in the nose area. The, um, the rail line keeps some volume. Uh, and it just, it, it rides really well in, you know, that um, knee to waist, even a head high kind of range. Um, we were surfing at the demo in kind of waist, waist high, but kind of thumping mm -hmm. um, steep waves. And it, uh, it felt good. It felt like it drove off the bottom really well into that first pump got a lot of speed, um, and then you can really hit the lip uh, if, the, if the wave presented itself like that. Uh, and it just, it, it flowed well, it, it got into waves early, um, but it, it definitely uh, fit that daily driver category of way. You know, it's not a groveler, it's not a high performance shortboard, um, but but for you know this just the kind of everyday kind of waves we get right it, right it was money so I think a, a lot of people when they think about daily driver they automatically you know because a lot of short boards mm -hmm. are labeled right, like right. a daily driver yeah. but not a lot of hybrids I don't think have been labeled a daily driver right. like kind of want you like talk a little bit about that like daily driver concept yeah totally so a lot of the um, the short boards these days they're trying to widen out most shapers are trying to widen out the range a little bit more to kind of make them more just your go-to short board um, I think this would fit more in the, the the hybrid grovel side of that and what we mean by that is a lot of the grovelers small wave short boards small wave boards have real wide tails wide outlines um, big big fat rails just a lot lots of volume squished down into a small package you right, know right. Uh, and that way you can fit it in a small pocket uh, you can ride mushy waves you can ride you know anything up to kind of uh, waist high on them but then they start to underperform when it gets anywhere kind of chunky or, or um, you know in the chest high range right, right. and uh, and so I, what Roberts was doing here was he's taking that concept of easy surfing performance 
and, and putting it into a board that can handle a wider range. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's the daily driver um, category. But it's not as short board oriented as a lot of the, you know, high performance kind of um, squash tails. Right, right. Drivers. I mean, boards that are going to be even narrower than this, narrower yeah, than narrow. this, yeah, and, and more what, rocker. What he did too is he took the, the outline of what you would take as a, a wider board for mm -hmm. your um, for your gravoire and squished it so it's a narrower um, plan shape. Right, right. But just um, kept the volume with the, with the width and the thickness um, as far as uh, keeping it in that range of, of being uh, everyday kind of. I mean, that's one thing that I notice about Robert's boards is that he he has a keen eye on the width yeah. of a board. He has yeah. a lockdown on the width and he, he's not a shaper that's gonna go as easily mm -hmm. to 22, 22 plus, 23 yeah. in the width. Like he, he really likes a board that goes rail to rail yeah. fast um, on his own gear because he's, he's an incredible surfer himself. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he keeps that in his board, so you'll notice that, like in the in the dimension charts on the Metamorph, that it starts taking up in the width mm -hmm. until it gets to about 21, and then it really slows down yeah. as far as taking up like beyond that, and uh, and so that keeps that high performance feel, uh, you know, to the to the board. Like it has that wider nose and flatter nose for paddling, and it has like a stable outline, mm -hmm. but it doesn't get to being like super super wide like yeah. some of the other boards. Some of the other boards do. And he seems to make up that volume in most of his boards kind of have a fuller rail to it. And that feels really nice when you're trying to get into waves. Uh -huh. um, it, a lot of the volume's under your chest, up where your chest would be paddling. Um, and it just helps with uh, overall getting into waves, but then once you're up, it's a real stable feel, you know? So when, when you're dropping in on kind of some steeper waves, it felt stable, um, it felt like it was had a, a real locked in feel with the, um, the tail. The, it's got a, a kind of a deep double concave. I don't know if you can see that there, but a deep double concave um, off the back, and then kind of a, a little bit of a full fuller tail too. Right. So that that um, foil in the rail really really goes from tail all the way up through the middle and up to the nose, and, and keeps keeps some fullness there, which helps. Um, you can surf a smaller board or a shorter board. Right. Um, right. And and or be a bigger guy or a, even a beginner. We had a guy out there on a 6.0 who was just frothing, who had stepped down from yeah, a, yeah. a fun board. So yeah, it, it, it makes it a really user-friendly. I mean, I think that that was, um, I mean, you talked about riding a shorter board, mm -hmm. which I think that's what a lot of, uh, that it almost seems like that's what every surfer yeah, is trying, trying to do, to, yeah. is riding a, a shorter board. Um, and a lot of times th they may actually end up going too short right. just for that thing. Like I want to ride a shorter board and then you go yeah. too short. Or too wide where they can't put it on rail. Exactly, yeah. right. So they go super wide so they can ride it short. But the uh, the one thing that, that I brought away from that demo is the number of people that were just like Blake that were just pumped that they can go to a board that short. Like Blake went from like riding a 7.6 fun board yeah. to riding a 6.0 metamorph and was riding it literally on his first wave he was riding it better yeah. than his 7.6 fun yeah, board. For sure. yeah. and, uh, and we got that feedback a lot because you know the staff was just exchanging boards in the water and, and trading out boards and a lot of them didn't even know what size they were because the <laughs> size was written on the bottom. Right. And so they're like, hey, let me try that one. And then all of a sudden, you know, the, Tristan was riding a 5.4 right. where he, he came off of a, uh, a 6.0 round nose fish yeah. and then was riding a 5.4 metamorph. So yeah. the uh, it seems like whatever Robert is doing in the in the design of this board, it makes it easier for people that want to step down to riding a shorter board and not necessarily be so dependent on the volume. Definitely, yeah. My my favorite board out of the, out of the whole run size run was the five six, which is uh, I think thirty one ish liters, which is okay. kind of lower than I would normally ride, um, but it felt like it paddled um, just as well as like a thirty three liter board. Um, and but the it, the smaller you go, the kind of the more refined the rail gets mm -hmm. in this um, in this model. And so I found that 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 paddle ability with the finer tuned rail really helped me um, surf it more vertically. Right. Right. Um, so yeah, I really it, it seemed like whatever he's doing uh, works with the the volume and the foil and the whole the distribution of the foam. What about so, uh, fin configurations? Because I, I saw you going back and forth between thruster and quad yeah. and switching boards or anything like that. Like, what was your what did you find out from that exercise? Yeah, in those small waves, uh, small conditions, it felt like the thruster really went a lot better um, as far as being able to really drive it and make it go because uh, the, the, the waves we were in kind of had a, uh, a flat takeoff to then like 
super dumpy. Um, and so you kind of had to, getting in early was key, but then also getting that good first pump to get down the line because uh -huh. it was a little section-y. Um, and the, the thruster really drove well. Um, the, the quad felt good, um, but it was a little more um, flowing and a little less drivey off the bottom turn, which would have been sick if um, the waves were, you know, head high and barreling. Right, so right. I would probably, and that's kind of the standard with, with uh, thrusters and, and quads, but um, this board especially, the double concave in the tail and the little V off the tail really seemed to go well with the um, thruster, right, th right. thruster fin setup because um, the water was f flowing through the fins into the tail really nicely on that and just made really good, snappy, quick movements. You know, the, the, the quad felt a little sluggish in turns, um, but man, like on a, on a long, barely big wave, it would have been sick because you're longer drawn out, you know. Right, um, right. It made its own speed you know, and, and kind of felt like the quad was taking off on its own, but it took a second, it wasn't to go, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's what Robert said actually on the on the barreling waves, he said he's had a lot of good feedback from the guys up in New Jersey that are yeah. riding this wave, and that that place gets heavy, like, ledging barrels, and uh, and he said, you know, like, everybody that's riding them up there, they're riding them as their everyday board, but they're also taking them and yeah, making conditions like that. Yeah, you it up and it changes the as board, well. actually changed the board quite a bit, you know, and a lot of times, when you change the um, fin configuration, it, it doesn't feel all that different. Uh -huh. This one felt like it would be good and with both quad or tri-fin, but just different at different times in different ways, you know? So you almost get um, kind of two different feelings, two different boards out of it. What do you think, uh, wave range-wise, because that's a big question, is uh, like where is this board at its peak? At its optimal. Yeah, like where, what's the range where it's peaking? I would say, um, chest high probably uh -huh. is, is its peak you know waist felt um felt good but it felt like anything lower than waist or thigh might be a little uh, you'd want to switch to a growler okay. um and then uh head 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 plus you could ride it in that for uh -huh. sure um, but I, i'm guessing you know chest to shoulder is probably your your optimal range for this board right right um, and still still working well in like waist like what we wrote it in yeah right? like waist, waist yeah, yeah 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 definitely okay and, so um, something like waist to shoulder is where this thing is yeah it was it was real best. fast and uh and aggressive you know it's kind of it was fun to surf as far as um getting into the lip and uh, uh -huh. It definitely surfed aggressively, and I imagine that if you put it in some bigger surf, it would it would slow all that down a little bit, right, but right. still handle really well with the round tail and the double concave to to be off the tail. It's almost got like a little spine in it behind the behind the back fin that felt like it would lock in really right, nicely right. on the takeoff on a steep drop. So, yeah, that's the Roberts Metamorph. That is twice the amount of tech delivered to you with zero clutter in the background. How many people riding it that day? Probably 10, ten. nine or 10 yeah. different people riding yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Lots of different uh, feedback. And uh, just an awesome all around board from Roberts. He's got a lot of unique things that go uh, that go into his board. Like, you know, what Jake was talking about, that that really pronounced double concave back here. That's, that's you know, we've got Roberts written all over it. The little bit of nose flip right here, just in the tip of the nose. That's a, that's a Roberts signature shaping maneuver. And then also, the way that he rolls the bottom rail up. So rather than having this come around, but you can see it rolls it up and that, just having that little bit of nose flip with this roll on the rail, a lot of times will save you from uh, burying the nose. Yeah. Like it'll just allow you to skip out of that rather mm -hmm. than stab the nose in and then uh, and then go over the front. And going so. vertical too, you could, I could, you could feel how it would get out of out of the wave quicker. It would okay. like catch on the white water at the end there. You kind of be able to right. um, do a turn without the nose kind of bogging a little bit. Yeah. So thank you, Jake. Thanks for the feedback. Thanks yeah. for joining the uh, yeah. joining the Love show it. here. Yeah. And uh, Robert's Metamorph. If you have any questions, you can give us a call at the shop 252-987-6000. or you can check us out online realwatersports.com forward slash surfing. Thanks for tuning in.